Hi everyone, this is Rebecca with the Assistive Technology Center at Little Tennessee Valley Educational Cooperative. And in this video, I'm going to be discussing using lesson picks with PowerPoint for distance learning in special education. So lesson picks and PowerPoint can be used together as a cost-effective tool for interactive remote learning. So if some of your students are working from home and you need a way to work with them uh, that doesn't cost a lot of money, this is a great option. The cost of a yearly subscription for lesson picks is $36 and although there are certainly paid versions of PowerPoint that are available, there is also a free online version that you can use. Um, in addition, if you're going to be using this for remote learning, you're going to need some sort of platform to do that. Um, Zoom is one that is available for free. So if what you're seeing on my screen looks different than your own screen, keep in mind that there are variations between operating systems, hardware, and PowerPoint versions. So if I'm on a Windows and you're on a Mac, or if there's an iPad, or if uh, you're using PowerPoint 2019 and I'm using 365, things can look different. For this demonstration, I'm using Windows 10 on a desktop computer. With PowerPoint 365, I'm going to be using both the online version and the desktop version. So for today's video, I'm going to do a quick overview of lesson picks. Then I'll be discussing three ways to download lesson picks materials into PowerPoint. And finally, I'll show you how to use the brand new lesson picks add-in for PowerPoint. So what exactly is lesson picks? It's a browser-based program, which means you use it on the internet on whatever browser you prefer, Chrome, Edge, Firefox. Um, and it's used for creating visual supports for literacy, behavior, therapy, and communication. So be thinking things like social stories, sequencing, games, sports, anything like that, that normally you would create, print, laminate, cut, and Velcro. So what we're trying to do is instead of doing all that, use these materials in a digital format. If you use lesson picks frequently, then please feel free to jump ahead in the video to where I'm discussing how to use it with PowerPoint. Right now, I'm just going to do a quick overview of how to get started with the program. It can certainly do a lot more than what I'm discussing, but this will be enough to get you started if you aren't familiar. I'm going to be focusing on these three tabs right here at the top, Clip Art, Sharing Center, and Your Lesson Picks. If you're wanting to make material, whether it is a visual schedule or something to go along with your thematic unit, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the Clip Art tab. This brings up their library of over 40,000 images, and they've got them in file folders by theme. So you can just scroll through here to find what you're looking for, whether you're putting together a visual schedule or you're doing a recipe uh, or you're doing an activity to go along with your thematic unit, this is where you would go. So say we're wanting to do something with Brown Bear. I would go to Stories and Songs. And here they have all sorts of units already put together for you. So you're not having to scour through all the different images to put them together. If I click on Brown Bear, it brings up all the images that I need for that unit. If you aren't seeing what you're needing, you can also go up here to the search bar. And in the search bar, there is a little drop down uh, arrow right here. Make sure that it says images. Otherwise, if it has all, it's going to bring up images and materials from the sharing center and also articles. If you do want a comprehensive search like that, then all is perfectly fine. But right now we're just looking for images. So let's say I would like a different dog. So I could put in dog and just do a search from the search bar because I don't want to use that dog. And I could find a different dog from all of the pictures that pop up. So say I like this white dog right here. In order to add that dog to my tray, I would click the plus sign right here. If I click on 
the picture itself. It's going to pull up that picture in its own page, and that's where you do customizations to the picture. Um, that's beyond the scope of what I'm doing right now, but once you get into Lesson Picks, that is very helpful. Now I'm going to go back to where I was with Brown Bear and put the rest of my clip art pictures in the tray. Now that I have the dog that I want, and I am just clicking this little plus sign right here. All right, so now all the pictures that I want in order to make materials are in my tray. So I keep saying your tray, what is that? Well, your tray is this little green area right here and anything in your tray is what you use to create your materials. So unlike programs like Board Maker, where you choose your template first and then you choose your pictures, Lesson Picks works in reverse. You choose your pictures first and then you can make whatever materials you want from those pictures. Now, I also have two black sheep in here and I don't need two. So if I want to get rid of one of them, all I have to do is grab it and drag the sheep that I don't want to this trash can in the corner. And now it's gone. If I decided I don't want to do this at all, and I'm moving, ready to move on to the next project, I would hit clear and that would empty my entire tray. So that's the difference between the trash can and the clear button right here. And these are the buttons I'm looking at. Save is if you created a tray and you're going to be using that again to make other materials and you want to save it for future use, you would click save and that tray would be saved in your lesson picks. And load is a way to load up those saved trays. So in order to make materials, you just click the create materials button. Then we've got this pop-up and here are all of the templates that are available. And there are a lot of templates and no matter how much I use Lesson Picks, I'm always finding new templates. And in addition to all the ones listed, many of them have multiple ones listed underneath them. So again, there is a lot don't expect yourself to know all of them right away. I've been using Lesson Picks a long time and I still don't know all of them. So let's say we want to create a picture schedule with our brown bear pictures. You just click that and hit next. Once you're on this screen, there's a lot of customization that you can do. The first one is modify list. So if I want all the text to be lowercase or all uppercase or have the first letter capitalized. I can do that for everything in my tray right here. So if I want them all lowercase, I can switch them to that. I can also shuffle them or put them in alphabetical order or reverse alphabetical order. Down here at the bottom, they have Google Translate. So if I want to translate this to another language, this is where I would make that change. So if I don't want to call this a dog or a bear, say I have, or I definitely don't want this to be a cardinal, I just want this to be a bird, this is where I would make that change. And you type in whatever word you want to show up there. You can also change the quantity, so say for whatever I'm using this for, I need to have two of everything, I can change that to two, and it will show up twice on the materials. You can also change the background color. So if I'm afraid my white dog won't show up very well in a white background, I can change that to a blue background or a pink background or whatever color that I want to use. Uh, also, I can move the order. So I can put the bear up at the top here. And if I want to duplicate, I can duplicate. If you accidentally do that and you have these two, but you only want one, there isn't a delete button, but what you can do is put this number right here to zero. Then hit next. And then right here is where you make some more customizations. This is going to be different depending on what the template is that you're using. Um, so for this one, we can put whatever title we want. So I can write brown bear schedule. 
and then there are a zillion different versions of this. There's the basic strip, bus, checklist schedule, Christmas lights, dinosaur, uh, flap schedule. So there's all kinds of different templates within the template that you can choose from. Then you can choose how many steps that you want to display. So maybe you only want to display four steps or 10 or whatever it is that you're needing to do. You can also decide if you want to show those text titles or not, and what color you want your box to be and what font you want to use. Again, all of these options are going to be different depending on which template you're using. Once you click finish, your materials are going to be generated and you're going to have the option to download that as a PDF. And right here is what we created. I'm not going to download that right now, but if I were going to, I would download it and print it, laminate it, cut it and Velcro it just like usual. The next tab is the sharing center. And before you make any materials whatsoever, I would suggest that you go to the sharing center to see if somebody else has already created those materials. There are so many lesson picks users and they post what they make on here to share. You can also post anything that you make to share. You don't have to, you can just stay in your personal account. You don't have to share what you make, but you can, and it's so helpful. Uh, you can search for it just like with images. You can go up to the search bar and you can search for materials. They also have on the side here where you can search by category and you can search by type. So say you're wanting to find something uh, that is a do or do not card or a daily report or a contingency map, whatever it is, you can click on it and it'll pull up all in that category. So it makes finding things in the sharing center really easy. So I believe don't reinvent the wheel, whatever you're looking for, it's probably already in the sharing center. Um, if not, then you probably can modify it fairly easily. So if we wanted to use this um, Peter's Feelings Changed Contingency Map, but we needed to change the name Peter, we could do that easily. Uh, all we have to do is clear out our tray. And then down here where it says load all, we would just load all of these images into the tray. And that not only loads up the images, but it also loads up whatever text was used. So if we go to create materials and I'm going to look for contingency map, because I want to keep that right, but I just want to change Peter's name. So right here, I can change Peter's name. Let's say I want it to be Tom. And now we're creating the same exact material that was created before, except we've changed the name. So the sharing center is just excellent. Um, it's a great time saver. Finally, if we go to your lesson picks, that's where all of your material is stored. Your lesson picks is where all of your material is stored. So what's in mine is not going to be in yours and it's only shared if you choose to share it. This is where all of your materials are saved, whether you created them or you modified them from something in the sharing center. Also, all of those trays that you want to save, they're right here. In addition, anytime you have a symbol that is custom made or that you have uploaded, it's stored here. So if you want to upload all the pictures of the kids in your class or the items in your classroom, this is where you would do it. So you go to upload a photo and you would just choose a picture that is on your computer. However, if you want to, they give you a custom email address right here and this is mine. So if you use this one, you're just going to send pictures to me. Uh, you send those pictures to that email address and it'll show up right here under the Your Lesson Picks tab.
Um, in addition, any custom symbols that you've made. So a custom symbol is something where you combine symbols together, you change the colors or remove colors, uh, or add different symbols to that symbol, like a little uh, X over it or something. That's a custom symbol, and they're all stored here. So if I scroll down, can see I have some text symbols and custom symbols like for instance right here I combined a water bottle symbol with a uh, kidney shaped table in order to show the water bottle on the table and under the table that's a custom symbol and then all these are pictures from uh, around the classroom that were loaded for a specific purpose. Uh, when you do load pictures, make sure that you give it a name that is searchable. In other words, um, if you are looking for this picture of Cheetos, make sure you call it Cheetos or snack or whatever you call it so that you can find it later. Otherwise, it'll just give it an automated name that's just a random string of letters and numbers and you won't be able to find it if you're searching. You'll be able to find it here but not if you're searching for it. And when we get to the part with the PowerPoint add-in, that becomes even more important. As far as these text symbols go, some, they do provide some already in lesson picks, but a lot of times you need them specific. You need it to be a name or you need it to be a vocabulary word or something to do with the unit you're doing. In order to do that, you have to go to add text symbols right here. And just like everything else with lesson picks, it's customizable. So whatever word I want to create, so let's say that I want to put in um, goat to go along with my animals down here. If I wanted to do another one, I would put a comma and then I would put um, rat. I can choose the font that I want to use. If I want it to be color or outline or stencil, uh, what kind of border I want. You can customize these text uh, words any way that you want. And then you just click add words and then those new text words are going to show up right down here at the bottom. If I go to my materials and this brown bear board game that I created, I can show you how to load this material into PowerPoint. So right here where it says download PDF, that's where you would normally click to download this. However, below that it says other download formats and that's what you're going to want to click. Once you do that, it expands and you have three options. PowerPoint fixed, PowerPoint fixed with tokens, and PowerPoint movable. When you download any of these three versions, it will download as a PowerPoint file that you just open in PowerPoint and click Enable Edit, and then you're able to use it like you would any other PowerPoint file. So let's start with the first version, PowerPoint Fixed. This file was downloaded from the Sharing Center at Lesson Picks in the form of a fixed file. So what does that mean? I can click and drag and do anything I want to this and it's not going to move and I can't resize it because the picture is actually in the background of the slide. So what this means is that we can play on top of it. So for this particular uh, material, we would want to have some kind of tokens where we can mark the things we're finding. In order to do that, go up to insert and shapes and then click whatever shape that you want to use to play this game. I like the donut. You can resize and color however you like. And then if you want to have multiple tokens, just use the shortcut Control D and that will copy and paste at the same time. If you want to move them all, highlight everything and set them to the side and you're ready to play. So we can find the strawberry and we can find the basketball. You can either give mouse control to your student if you're using a program like Zoom, or you can have them describe the pajamas are on top of the house. 
and then you can move the token for them. The envelope is in front of the door. The newspaper is beside the house. So you can either let them have control of the mouse and move things, or you can have them describe to you where to put the tokens. However, if you don't want to have to create a bunch of shapes to be tokens for your game board or activity, you can just download in the Fixed with Tokens format, and this is what will come up. Lesson Picks has provided all of these tokens for you to choose from. You just pick the ones you want to use to play your activity or your game, make copies of them if you need to, delete the ones you're not planning to use, and you're ready to go. These tokens can be manipulated. You can make them larger or smaller or anything else that you can do to an image in PowerPoint. The third format is the movable format. So unlike the first two, if I try to move this picture, I can move it. If I try to resize it, I can definitely resize it. So this means that it's not on the background and it's not something that is as easily played on top of because you can accidentally move it around or resize it while you're playing. But in this example of bingo, this could be good because I might want to have multiple bingo cards on the same page one for me, one for my student, or multiple students. So because it is something that I can change the size, I can go to the different bingo cards and copy them and move them onto the other slides, resize them, and put as many of them that I want to put on the same slide. And of course, PowerPoint wants to help me design this slide beautifully, so let's, let, let's just go with it and make a pretty slide. There we go. So this version gives you a lot more freedom to manipulate the images, but since it's not set to the background, they can easily be moved around by you or the student while you're trying to use them. So all of those three formats, fixed, fixed with tokens, and movable, will get the materials that we create or uh, find in the sharing center into a PowerPoint format so that we can use it. However, we still don't have easy access to all of the images in our account, whether those are lesson picks images or ones that we have custom made or uploaded. In order to have easy access to all of that while we're working in PowerPoint, we need to get the lesson picks add-in for PowerPoint. So in order to do that, go up to the top to insert and then go to Get Add-ins. Once you click that, the entire Office add-in store will pop up. Do a search for Lesson Picks, and the Lesson Picks add-in will be available to add. So just click Add, and you're ready to go. Once you add it, if you go to your Home ribbon, it will be all the way on the right-hand side, where it says Insert Symbols, lesson picks and there'll be a little stick man there. If you click that, you'll open up the lesson picks add-in and when this pulls up you're going to want to sign in. And like I said, try to keep your username and password somewhat simple because you do get booted off from time to time. This add-in can be moved around. I can pull this out so we can see the whole thing. Uh, there's a little arrow here where I can move it resize it or close it. So you're not stuck with it being on this side of the page. You can put it anywhere that's convenient for you. There are multiple tabs for this add-in. Tray, Search, Common, Browse, and Play. So the very first tab is Tray, and what's going to show up on that is whatever you currently have in your tray on Lesson Picks. And if you'll recall, we were working on Brown Bear when we were on Lesson Picks, and this is what was in the tray at the time, and now it's still there. If I go back to Lesson Picks, get rid of all of this, put other pictures in, I would just have to click Refresh, and those pictures would show up. So this just gives us convenient access to whatever we're currently working on. In order to get these pictures onto the page, you just click, and then it shows up. Once it's on the page, you can move it around and resize.
The next tab is search. And just like any other search tab, anything that we're looking for. So say I would like to find a hat. I would just put hat and it's going to search for all of the hats in lesson picks. There we go. And now our bear can have a hat. Anything that you have loaded up, saved because you customized it, can also be searched. Just make sure that you name it something that you can find when you search. So I'm going to put Cheeto. Now this is the image that Lesson Picks provides for Cheetos, but the one that I loaded up also showed up because I named it Cheetos. This way I was able to find it. So if I'm working with a child and this is their favorite snack and this is the bag that they use, now we have an actual picture of it to use. The next tab is common. And if you have any experience customizing any of the images, you'll recognize these from that. These are the things that are most commonly used whenever you're customizing any kind of image. So you'll have things like lines and X's and arrows and frames and speech bubbles. And these are just here for convenience. They can also be used for tokens too. However, if you want to find tokens, you can also just search for them. and they'll come up. And this right here is the token file. And if you click on it, all of the tokens that we had with the fixed with tokens version also show up here. The next tab is browse. Three, two, one. The next tab is browse. And just like with the Lesson Picks website, you can scroll through the different files that they have since they have them organized by category. There's also a drop down menu so you can scroll through and see not just all the files, but all the subcategories within them. So this makes it easy to find the things that are all grouped together. One thing that you can do on here is the sticker add-ons. So if you have a picture of a face, you can pull this up and this is just like the filters on your phone. So your student can add frames and hats and hair and glasses and funny ears or earrings. Um, this is just a really fun interactive option. The final tab is play and it's the last piece that we need in order to make all of these materials truly interactive. We're able to bring in all of our boards and worksheets through the fixed, fixed with tokens or movable format. And then we're also able to bring in all of our pictures, whether they're lesson picks or our own custom pictures through the add-in. But the play actually brings all that to life. So we have three different games we can use and a timer. There's a spinner, dice, and draw cards. So let's start with the spinner. Once you click that, you have the option of choosing either the tray or you can just use numbers. So let's use the tray and create game. You just click spin. And one of the options from your tray pops up. If you click it, it disappears. You can click and drag in order to move it to the page, but it is a little bit difficult to do. Um, so it's not something I would probably have a student do, but you do have that option available. The next one is dice. Again, you can select from the tray. You also have the option to use numbers or dots like traditional dice. Uh, do keep in mind that because it's dice, it needs to be divisible by six. If it isn't, then the Lesson Picks add-in will just duplicate some of the pictures that you already have. You can choose between one and five dice, depending on what kind of game you're wanting to do. So let's just pick pictures from our tray and two dice and create game. And there we go. And you just click to roll. And then whatever shows up, again, just like with the spinner, you can click and drag over to the page, but it isn't easy. The next one is draw cards. And with this one, you can choose between a hat 
or a bear. So let's start with a hat and create game. With this one, it's always going to pull from the pictures in your tray. There's a bear. And once it comes up, it shows up down here under already drawn. And just like with the others, you can click and drag over to the page. Uh, just clicking it doesn't get it to the page, so it isn't that easy, but it can be done. And I do love the already drawn down here, so you can see what you've already gone through. And the next one is the bear. And the bear likes to think thoughts, hmm. which also can be or maybe not dragged over. Yes, okay. And again, hmm. what you've already drawn shows up hmm. down at the bottom. The final one is the timer, and you can either count down, count up, or just run a continuous timer. So whatever amount of time you want to put in, you just enter it and hit create game and the timer will pop up. So you could add this to your game to say, how many can you find in 30 seconds? Or can you beat me in this amount of time? Or as soon as this is over, we'll get to do something else, sort of like a first then. So you can use this timer while you're working on other things. So for this particular material, what would I do to make this as interactive as possible for my student? The first thing I would do is search for a magnifying glass. This way it would be fun to find the things on the page. Now there's several options and I know just from trial and error that this is the one that's actually see-through, the other ones are opaque. And then I would just resize the magnifying glass so it's more appropriate for this page. So now, if we're looking for these objects, we have a fun way to look by moving the magnifying glass around the page. And that can be controlled either by you or the student. Also, I would go to play and I would make sure that the pictures right here are the ones I have loaded into the tray. Now, currently those are not the pictures I have loaded into my tray. There are some that are similar, but I don't have all of these, but I would have all these in my tray. And then I would use either the spinner or the draw cards. And I would use this as a way to prompt for what we're going to find. So you would draw and oh my goodness it's the white dog let's look for the white dog of course our white dog looks a little different right <gasps> but there's the white dog uh, and that would be a fun way to make this interactive or we could just go to the timer and say how many of these can you find in 20 seconds or whatever time you want to use and that way it makes this particular material come to life so this is an example of a sorting activity that I pulled from the Sharing Center at Lesson Picks. When I did that, I also loaded all of the images from that activity into my tray. And you can see them right here on my tray in the Lesson Picks add-in. So if we're going to use this with a student, there's a few different ways we could go about it. With these images already in the tray, you can click and it'll show up on the page. You don't have control as to where it's going to land or what size. So clearly, um, if we're going to use these, they would have to be resized, and that may or may not be something that's good for use with your, your student. Another option is to go to play. And you can use the spinner or the draw cards in order to pull from there onto the page. Remember, when you're doing this particular thing, you have to click and drag. If you just click it, it disappears. So you have to hold on to it and drag it over. And it's always going to pop up in the center, no matter where you try to drag it. So if I try to put it in the animal column or the vehicle column, um, that's not going to work because it's always going to land in the center. And sometimes it doesn't work at all for me and I just sit there trying to drag and drag and drag and it's just not working. So it can be a little bit frustrating. Also, you can see they're all kind of stuck together. So that's another issue that could be frustrating. What I prefer to do is to go ahead and preload all of the images I want to sort 
and put them over to the side and have them the size that I want them to be. So I can use the Lesson Picks add-in to do that ahead of time and just have them ready to go. And then I can use whatever game I want to use in order to choose which one we're going to sort first. So we could use the hat or the spinner and say, oh, the horse. You go over here and you move the horse. And I think that makes it a lot more user friendly while you're using it. You're not going to be frustrated trying to get things moved over. So this is an example of something that's also very common. Uh, this is a matching activity or it could also be a sequencing activity. When you would normally make these, you'd print it and then cut out all of these little squares so that your student could physically match them up. But we're trying to make this digital and interactive, so how can we do that? One option is to use the add-in and pull up these pictures, but like I showed you with the sorting activity, that can sometimes be problematic, and it's good to have another option. So something I like to use for these type of activities is the snipping tool. And the snipping tool is not part of PowerPoint or Lesson Picks. It's actually part of Windows 10. So you would just push on your keyboard, the Windows key, Shift, and S, and your snipping tool will come up. Your screen will gray, and then you're able to use the snipping tool in order to create a square around whatever you want to cut out. Just think of it as you are literally cutting it out. Once you do that, it automatically saves to your clipboard. So when you hit Control V, it pops up because you've pasted, or you can right click and hit paste. So now I have the exact same thing cut out. So the student can just match. And this also makes it much more consistent as far as how it looks, as opposed to if I just pulled up these pictures in the add-in, it doesn't have the little dotted lines around it and it doesn't have the text, and this provides that. So this is an example of a social emotional learning activity uh, that I found in the Learning Center at Lesson Picks called What Do Good Friends Do? And I downloaded it in movable format so that I could resize it because I was wanting to put a lot of things on the same page. So I also, from my add-in, got these tokens, and they're just simple check marks and X's because some of these, like share, are things that good friends do. And some of them, like spit, are not things that good friends do. I downloaded this communication board also from Lesson Picks and added it to this activity so that while I'm working with the student, I do have those same communication supports that we're using in the classroom or that they're using at home. So if we're talking about putting it on or going up or yes or no or all done, everything is right here in a format that they're used to seeing. So if you want to add communication supports into your activity, that's another thing that can be very helpful. So this is an example of a story that I got from the Sharing Center on Lesson Picks. And you can use this with a story for a literacy unit or for a social story. Uh, just make sure you download it in a fixed format and one per page. You don't want to have multiple pages on the same page. So for this one, I just wanted to show you that you can add to it to make it a little bit more interactive. So for this example, I'm going to go into presentation mode. I recorded audio so that the student can play this by themselves. Sneezy Bear and Honey Bee. Every spring, Baby Bear started sneezing. Ah, cheer! Also, I added in these little squares at the bottom, and that's a zoom feature in PowerPoint that makes it fun to go to the next page. He rubbed his itchy eyes and sniffed his runny nose. He was allergic to flowers. So this was just an example to show you that you can keep expanding and adding to what you're doing and taking it to another level and making things more interactive. Thank you very much, and I hope this video helped you get started using Lesson Picks and PowerPoint for creating interactive lessons for remote learning. If you'd like to learn more, you can visit our websites at ltvec.org or atforkids.com, or you can visit the Lesson Picks website at lessonpicks.com. In particular, I'd like to point out their YouTube channel if you'd like to stay up to date on all the new things they're doing to make Lesson Picks interactive. 
And don't worry if you can't remember everything that we went over in the video. I've created a comprehensive handout that goes over everything that we've discussed step by step, and a link to that is below the video. Once again, thank you very much and good luck.